Nou, meneer Abdul Absalon in feelings. Zeg het voor allemaal, maar praat hard. Hoe kom je van je paard? Maar het is een plezier om te houden van alles. Het is een plezier om alles te hebben, mijn vrouw. Uh, en alles wat je hebt bij je van mij, mijn vrouw. Het is een groot jaar voor mij, mijn vrouw. Het is een beetje 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 een Hello everyone and welcome to another brand new month of Coffee with Cartels, hosted by Marika and I. Hello Marika. Hey Karen, happy spring day. Yes, happy spring day to everyone. This is my new microphone, a beautiful rose in, <laughs> in connection with spring day. And although there is so much snow on the mountains, it is still pretty much winter. Once again, folks, we apologize for the quality of last week's episode as I had internet issues just before going live. What a nerve-wracking moment that was. If this does happen again, unfortunately, we will need to cut the, short, uh, the show short, and I'm sure you'll understand. While we were working, sorry, while we are working from home, Inspector Diana kindly films these shorts for us with her cell phone. And we love to show you these inserts. As you can see, the Carties love and appreciate the horses. And we know all the owners and the horses by name. We have dedicated this month to Heritage Month, where it all started and how the cart horses are proud, how the cart horses are a proud part of Cape Town's heritage. Yes, dating back to District 6 and the CBD where they lived and actually thrived. Paul Farthing finally left Kabul, yay, with all his dogs and cats called Operation Ark. For those of you who don't know, Paul was a Royal Marine during his 2006 deployment to Afghanistan. And he saw firsthand the plight of the stray dogs and cats that roamed the town of Nauzad and started a rescue organization called Nauzad. What a lovely yet very tense story to follow. Folks, last weekend, Oliver took gorgeous butterfly. If you watched last um, previous programs, has an apartment of a stable of her own. To Peel Baffin and Butterfly was placed in the first rankings of the show and came second in the Grand Prix. Well done, Butterfly and Oliver. Well done. Yes. In Philippa's words on the 26th of August, I'm absolutely, unbelievably proud of my beautiful Alfie. She was amazing tonight. After the last 10 months, our goal was just to get to the Tokyo Paralympics. Once we knew we had attained that goal, our goalposts moved to making the freestyle. That night, they made the freestyle and... Then on Monday night, Philippa and Alfie achieved a magnificent score of 71.155 at the Equestrian Paralympics. You are both an inspiration to us all. And I have personally taken on your quote, um, Philippa, never let anyone put a limit on your dreams. And congratulations to Team Kayla, Van der Waal, for also achieving a brilliant score of 66.643 on Thursday. Our AGM will go virtual again this year, so please diarize the date of the 12th of October at 6 p.m. We would love to see you and um, show you what we've been up to in the past year. It has been a struggle, but we are still standing and working hard for the car horses thanks to our donors. Today, folks, we have another great lineup for you. You'll, we will be talking to Corinne de Clack, a founding member of the Cart Horse Protection Association, an interview that I could actually listen to over and over again. So do stay tuned, and then another interesting snippet in our Down Memory Lane featuring the Cup Car. 
<laughs> if you've just tuned in, you are watching Coffee with Cartos, and we are thrilled to have you with us on this rather gloomy spring day. <laughs> Although we work hard to bring you these shows from our living rooms, the aim is to educate, entertain, and bring in much needed funding. So please like, follow, and share us on Facebook and YouTube, and don't feel shy to hit that share button. Tell us where you're tuning in from. We would love to say hi in the comments. Karen was actually born in Scotland and lived all over the UK. She moved to South Africa in the early 80s and lived in the Northern Cape and rural Eastern Cape. She saw a huge number of welfare situations and worked with the SPCA in Kimberley when she was just 14 years old on the holidays. Karen ended up in Cape Town working for the Animal Rescue Organization in 1994 and started Cart Horse Protection Association in 1995. Now, after 26 years, Corin is working for the PDSA for a fresh start. Once again, I'm so sorry, folks, I had internet connection issues again, but my three furry, but my three fur babies did read the brief this time to stay quiet during the interview. Welcome, Karen. Tell us what you saw through the window that day that changed the lives of the working cart horses forever. Oh, I rem I'll remember that day to my grave. Um, I was working for the Animal Rescue Organization in 1994, whenever it was. It was I don't I can't remember. It would have been now, when did Cart Horse officially start? It was 95, 1995. Yes. So it would have been in 1995. And my office faced the road um, in observatory, the little side road. We were in a little um, cottage and down a little side road in observatory. And my office was in the front and looked directly out onto the road. And there were cart horses coming up and down there quite frequently. But for the most part, you know, they got my beady eye and everything was sort of kind of okay. But that day, it was a little chestnut. And I can't remember if it was a, a mare or a gelding, um, but she was very slight and not weak, but there was no, there, she was very young and um, very, very um, tired. And I, I can't say she was thin, but she had that round tummy that you get from what they get when they just eat nothing but cow meal. Hmm. And she was malnourished and she was tired and she had an injured foreleg that she couldn't, it wasn't just lame. There was something seriously wrong with one of her forelegs. I think I can't remember which one it was, but she was in a lot of pain and she was really not coping. And she was just so miserable and dejected. And there was no way you could just, walk away and say let the horse carry on because she basically couldn't carry on I don't know how many more streets she would have made so you know when you get those sort of snap decisions right that's it something's got to be done here and I ran outside and I pulled the horse over and I said stop right there and I think the guy that was driving the cart was had rented her and so he was seriously annoyed that I came along and said that's it you're not going a foot further so I made him unhitch the horse and she just stood there. Then the fun started because I had to go back inside and try and find someone to come pick up this horse. And that was where the problem started because poor old SPCA, they were running around all over the place. They didn't have staff. And I'm not sure if they, I think they had a horse box, but it just wasn't available at the time. And then there was Wayne Duff Riddle who ran the Anti-Cruelty League in Epping. He had a horse box, but he said it was a rust bucket. So he said, no, I, I, I can't remember who it was who ended up coming, but I actually was thinking about it this morning and I think it was a combination of the both of them spoke to each other and said, I, I think it was the SPCA went and picked up the rust bucket from Epping and then came to observatory to pick up this poor horse and took her away. And I can't remember what happened to her, but I doubt very much if she was sent back into carting because she really was lame, beyond lame. There was something very seriously wrong there. And she just wouldn't have been fit to pull a cart again. 
And that really was that because I thought, no, bugger it. How? If there's one here in observatory, there must be hundreds of these horses walking around with similar injuries and suffering similar things. And, you know, it was the SPCA and it was the Anti-Cruelty League at the time who seemed to have all the um, resource available. And um, I found up Sean Boddington, who was the chief inspector of the SPCA at the time. And because I'd been speaking to him about collecting this horse anyway. And then I phoned him, I think it was the next day or a few days later. And I said, Sean, based on what happened with this horse in the road, is there a place in the Cape Town welfare sector for an organization that just deals with cart horses? And mm -hmm. He came back instant. Yes, absolutely. There was no hesitation. There was no sort of, well, I don't know how it's going to be funded. It was absolutely yes. And that really was the catalyst. His comments were the catalyst to get something moving. And Wayne Duff Riddle, who was with the anti cruelty League, also emphatically, yes, we must do something. We've got to share the load and try and get something a better resource going to to provide some kind of um clinic facility and so on and then that set off a, a whole so it was the two of them really and myself um set off a series of meetings at people's houses and then i remember meeting down at the alfin hotel with a group of people who just concerned citizens, really. But it was the phoning around and getting a venue to meet. And um, uh, oh, there's my Ruby in the background. Ruby, <laughs> 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 what's happening? I need a camera. It's looking at you, look. Please. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Always cute. Anyway, um, and that was it. That was the start of car tours. And we ended up having meetings here, there, and everywhere. And um, we realized that there just had to be some kind of framework put in place. And then it was clinics and it was farrier work and it was the harnesses. Oh, my gosh. And and that so it all came from that little chestnut. I'm going to say it was a mare just because I can. <laughs> that little chestnut in the road outside the animal rescue organization one morning in 1995 and that was it oh, after that oh. but there were a lot of people who who stepped up it was clear when the call went out to do something about the working cart horses a lot of people came forward and said yeah. and then you know, it has happened. yeah they, they some stayed and some didn't so yeah and that was that was the birthday thanks to that little chestnut amazing <laughs> So how did this lead to the establishment of Cart Horse Protection Association, Karen? So then it was just a case of having meetings um, about the common sort of concerns, and it was you know, the feet, the harness, and the diet. And um, like I said, there were many meetings held, and it was very voluntary at the first the first um, months and, and years and we worked very closely with um, the SPCA horse care unit and also Wayne Duff Riddle from um, Epping and there was a lady called Janet May who I'm still friends with she moved back to the UK um, she was part of the or she was in she was in charge of the horse care unit back then and then she I think there was quite a number of people that ended up following Mm. Um, and it was basically the SPCA and Anti-Cruelty League and then a lot of fundraising and trying to get a database going and I did all this sort of on the side while I worked for Animal Rescue but then I didn't really go down very well so I had to make a call so 1997 yeah. I said I'll leave Animal Rescue and then run car tours from my house and that's how it worked and it was in my which eventually came my children's bedrooms uh, car tours <laughs> had a desk and a very dodgy computer and a whole lot of little receipt books and yeah it was very antiquated very antiquated but we got a little committee together and in 1997 I sort of became an employee um I think it was around about May 97 and I worked full-time for about eight months seven eight months and then, but you know, I had a, a yeah, my daughter was a baby. There was another baby, um, and so it didn't really 
answer what I needed. And I felt that the cart horse needed to go in its own direction and, and find its own feet. And there were lots of people coming and going. There was an inspector that was employed. In fact, I think there were a couple of inspectors employed. But at that point, there were clinics being done, which is so important. Absolutely. And there was a lot of outreach. And we were we were taking bucky loads of, um, what was it now? I think it was Lucerne, more than Ote, and sort of low-grade... Um, concentrate and taking it out to these communities where um, the owners were and just rolling up at the um, at the scrap metal places in our cars loaded up with horse care kit <laughs> and and Billy Branchley the farrier remember Billy he yes. joined point he was there quite early in in the setup um, I think he was at those meetings sort of after the, the original call and then he came along and he helped with of course the all the farrier the farrier needs and there was a couple of farriers I think who got involved and then there was sort of training and coaching and um and that and that all sort of came sort of from 1997 onwards and it was interesting to see that also the harness repairs that were done that was done I think by Belinda Tom's um business um yeah, I think she had a harness, a harness repairman who would come and do, or, or you know, repair, repair the harnesses. And the harnesses were a serious problem back then because they were pathetic. They weren't actually harnesses. A lot of them. Yeah. Wow. wow. Um, can you share some of your early memories? Um, just on the plight of the working cart horses. Yeah, it was very sad and bad. It was it was bad, um, yeah. I don't need. I can't. I can't even. I can't. You can't compare what was back then to what is now. Um, they, you still have challenges now. I know that, mm -hmm. but you've got a finger on who these people are. Back then, we didn't even know how many horses there were. We didn't know all the owners. We didn't know the yards. We didn't know horse movement. Who was selling which one to who? Which one had died because it collapsed or you know, it was uh, maltreated or it had colic or whatever. Um, that registry of horses started much later on. So the earliest memory I can tell you is pretty much that it was very bleak. A lot of harness sores um, and just not much respect. There were the owners that did care. They were one or two. There's always been that. But the guys that were hiring the horses for using in the day, and, you know, they... <laughs> They were just, they were desperately cruel to these horses. And, sure. you know, sure. they had a hard time. I mean, you could see them. They were just broken, these horses. They were completely broken. Um, and there was a lot of debate back then about calling for City to ban the working cart horse completely. Okay. Um, and there was a division about um, whether that was a good thing to do or not. Do you um, call for an outright ban or do you work with the communities and try to get the horses in some kind of working condition which clearly happened that was the route that 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 everyone went so yeah working working yeah. with communities is is definitely the the the, the way to go and um, because it's always going to be yeah. there and it still is there today after all these years but what is your perception of the working cart horses today oh uh, <laughs> chalk and cheese yes. chalk and cheese yeah i mean very proud um i don't have to well you know i do every now and again send crazy whatsapp messages to and we love you for it <laughs> <laughs> my shaky hand behind the steering wheel <laughs> 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 Let's go catch his horse. Um, no but the condition is amazing the conditions are great and you know i think the the, the difference is is that now there's a go-to place, so now yes. you don't have to worry. And um, there is a there is a place to call, and the horse will get the help it needs. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I remember once there was a, a cart horse that broke down and collapsed in Claremont Main Road oh, on a summer's okay. day. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it was just <laughs> what, how can this happen? Um, so I mean, that sort of thing. I don't think you're going to get that anymore, are you? No. Look, you get, no. You can tell some pretty grim horror stories of what you get now. 
But the SPCA were instrumental back then, um, very, very early days. They were super um, responsive. And um, Alan Perrins was very supportive. And so was Sean Boddington. And so was Janet May. These are all names from way gone, way back. Um, yeah. And then Wade Duff Riddle, like I say, um, they were also amazing. Um, and then there were various committee members as well who used to come out to clinics. Um, Rosie Diago was another one. Okay. Um, they would come and work at the clinics, you know. Um, and so today's sure. horses, sure. today today the horses, yeah, they might have quite a rough time, but there's a place, there's a go-to place, and they're in good condition, aren't they? And they're not lame, and they're not they're not full of harness sores, and there's a there's a solution to the problem if they have those related issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're there, we're there all the time, and and we really see you know horses collapsing, um, like like we did in the past. So we we definitely have made a a, a huge, huge turnaround. Absolutely. And also what you've got now, which, okay, the SPCA and Anti-Cruelty League would confiscate horses occasionally, but you've got a, de a, a decent r and &R, so you've got a system that yes, works there. Do. So that's also, I mean, phenomenal. And the fact that you had that donated, that, that should go as to show that the public really wanted to see a turnaround with, you know, what was happening to these animals. Um, you've You've always been involved in animal welfare, um, started COF, um, been involved in ARO. What drives you? Animals. <laughs> so it's just something I was born with. I don't know. Yes. It's just something that's always been there. I mean, I, when I was a very little girl, my earliest memories are playing with animal toys, not with um, human toys. You know, I mean... You know what My I mean? I mean, dog. I had little toy farms and we had hobby horses in the back garden and my neighbours uh, um, used to come over and we had stables. We had stables behind the Wendy house and oh. all the horses would be stabled there. We had all the Barbie horses. Yeah, we didn't worry with the Barbies. We wanted, where's Barbie's horse? <laughs> As it had supper. <laughs> oh, <nice>. <laughs> 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 and so it's just always been there. And um, there's been a number of occasions where I've wanted to leave welfare just to get out for a bit, but it doesn't work out that way. <laughs> I Don't never quite get, to get pulled back again because, you know, there's got to be a meeting or there's, something's going to happen. So, yeah, but I'm hugely proud of Car Tours. I think you guys are phenomenal. And the nicest part, you're such a lovely bunch of people. You're oh, such a, you. a beat and you. positive. You. Yeah, you are. You're positive and you know what you're doing and you you um you focused and driven. Pardon the pun. Yeah. But I have <laughs> to say, I mean, Marika and I work for an amazing team and everybody is hundred and ten percent dedicated to the horse. And as Diana always says, the horse comes first. Um yes. it is um, yeah. people and they earned a, a living but the horse always comes first and yeah. it'll be love working there and thank you for the compliments and and thank you for basically looking through the window th through the window that day and and seeing this this chestnuts and who started it all and um yeah, she, thank did. You for your, she was the mm. one she was a catalyst that that, that yes. little chestnut. i don't know what happened to her but oh such a pity yeah yeah, but um, it was something that was meant to be because it was also, I remember yeah. Sean being absolutely emphatic, absolutely, we need to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And so that was the, right, I'm off to make some phone calls now, start phoning around and, yeah. So how Amazing. many years is this? How many years is it now? 26. Oh. Amazing. Absolutely 26. phenomenal. 26 years. Well, Karen, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you for the stories. Thank you for having me and keep up the good work. Keep doing Absolutely. what you do. Thank you. No, we will. And you keep doing <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Wow, what an amazing interview that was. I mean, yeah. I learned a few, a few things.
<laughs> we had so much fun interviewing Karen. <laughs> no, we did. We really did. But thank you once again, Karen, for your dedication to all animals that you that have crossed your path, uh, big or small. And the PDSA are very, very lucky to have you. And we wish you all the best for the years to come. Mm -hmm. Now, while we have a lot of fun, this is not our sole purpose. We are actually here to raise some funds. So as Karen mentioned in her interview, things have changed a lot over the last 26 years. <coughs> the loads were much bigger in those days. There was no one to police them. The harnesses were horrible and they caused so many wounds. We cannot do what we do without the support of our generous donors. And that is you folks. Please continue donating and help us to help the working horses for another 26 years. We um, remind you to put your name and your address on your, um, just send it to us with your proof of payment so that we can send your section 18A certificate with you for you at the end of the tax year. Now, because we're not at the office, we obviously don't get to see all the shenanigans no, of the office don't. cats. But today I want to share with you a very special little dog. Sasha is a well-known sight at Epping and on the road. Wherever Simba goes, there Sasha goes too. When they stop at Epping, she'll do a quick round to greet everyone before returning to her post atop Simba's cart. Sasha is the happiest dog you will ever meet. She is a firm favorite with all the cart horse staff, excepting the Epping Cats. <clears throat> so once again, well done, Marika. That was awesome. I, I, I really miss her visits. She is such a special girl <laughs> and and I hate to have favorites as animals are all so special in their own way. But I can say that Sasha is the happiest cart horse dog living on the Cape Flats. And we all love her dearly. <laughs> that we do. <laughs> Up next, join us down memory lane, the early days. I had such fun researching this on the District 6 and Cape Heritage Society Facebook page. A must look see people is very, very interesting. It all started with a cup cub, which is a two wheeled, four seater carriage drawn by two horses. Equipped with a bowed canvas or leather hood, it was used to carry passengers and mail in the days before railways and was one of the fastest means of transport available in the region. Cup cubs were developed during the Boer War, actually, as a safe way to travel across even rough terrains. Known in Afrikaans from before the 1820s as a kapkad, a cart horse with a hood, its name was mistakenly rendered by English-speaking people as Cape Cart. Once again, if you've missed any of our previous episodes, please go to our website and just click on the Coffee with Cart Horse tab or go to YouTube or even our Facebook page and you can watch Ooh. any of the previous episodes. We are doing our 20th episode today, so there are 19 for you to catch up. <laughs> and they're all awesome. <laughs> but I'm going to use this as a microphone because it's spring day on that day, folks. Please remember <laughs> to like and share, as Miracle always says. Uh, we really do need your support. And as always, as I say, no donation is ever too small or too big. And thank you for tuning in. And, I'll, and until next Wednesday, please keep safe and well. Bye now. Bye, Marika.
Bye, Karen. See you soon. See you soon.